You are a good boy. You are a good boy. You are a good boy. Okay, we need to do a training video now. We need to do a we need to do a training video. Training video. <laughs> okay, training video. What is happening, people? And welcome to today's video, where Conan and I would like to welcome you to an absolute winter wonderland. We didn't know this was going to happen, and although it is absolutely terribly beautiful, it does mean that I'm going to be spending a little bit more time inside today. So what I thought I would do is just compile some of my training highlights and put them together for a training video and just a little bit of talk for all of you. Now, I don't want to waste anyone's time whatsoever, so we are going to jump right into the training, and it all starts out with this 435-pound Zercher squat. Now, the reason why this here is because it, it moves pretty easily. My form doesn't really break down, but I do have a torn proximal bicep, and I'm not planning on getting it fixed. So my question is, for those of you in the know who are smarter than me, is doing the Zercher squat going to hurt my torn proximal bicep any further or do you guys think I'm safe doing it? So if you do know that, please leave it in the comment section down below. Now, what you guys are seeing here are a number of 600 pound deadlifts. There was 605 axle, a 600 pound pause plus one, and then this is a 615 double. And the reason why is because one of the biggest goals of the 45 masters program for me, which is the program that I'm currently running, is to be able to normalize a 600 pound deadlift. Because in the past, I know that I can walk in the gym and hit 550, or most of the time I can walk in and hit 585, but I want it to feel like I can always walk in the gym and hit 600 pounds, no matter what variation, what I'm doing, what the cause is. Uh, so that is what I'm currently working on, and a lot of this highlight video is showing you exercises that I'm doing to help me reach that goal. One of which here is the keg clean and press, which by definition seems like it should be a shoulder exercise because it is a clean and press, but I'm throwing the keg up there with my hips. So it is more like a one motion and I'm just trying to open my posterior chain as explosively as I possibly can, which again is exactly what's going on here with the sandbag over shoulder. This is a 185 pound sandbag, which isn't terribly heavy. I could go heavier to my shoulder, but I'm trying to throw that thing as high as I can and try to move as explosively as possible, just as if I were doing deadlifts for some sort of speed work. Because for deadlifts, if you can move your hips from a closed position to an open position in that horizontal plane faster, then you're going to get more vertical drive, whether it be in something like the sandbag extensions or in your deadlift. So it is massively, massively important, but the great part about doing something like these extensions is you're also getting all of that time under tension for your upper back, holding the sandbag in place, plus your glutes, your posterior chain, triple extension, it is working all of the great things that you're going to need to be a powerful individual. Because one thing is for sure, if you want to be powerful, building your posterior chain, especially being able to move it explosively, is absolutely where it's at, whether you are an athlete or just a normal gym goer. Now right here, I did need to mention that 58 inch height, that is a typo. 58 inch height is what I'm shooting for. This bar is set at 54 inches. So it's actually four inches shorter than I wanna go. The next time I go around, I'm going to take that up to about 260 or 56 inches and then hopefully I'll do okay there and move it up to 58 because I'm just trying to play a little bit with the height of my loading right now. Also, for my squats, since the deadlift is my main goal right now, I'm kind of letting squats take a back seat and give my spine a little bit of a rest since I'm deadlifting a little bit heavier more often. Uh, I'm doing a lot of unilateral leg work for my squats. So that's why you guys are seeing here, this is a sandbag lunge which is absolutely brutal. It doesn't look that bad. The weight is set at 185, and that's not a terrible lunge. It's not a terrible light lunge, but it's not a terrible heavy lunge. Uh, but with the sandbag, because of the weight being variable and because of the balance being off, it is a much harder exercise to do. Uh, also, single leg stuff here, looking at the Zercher Bulgarian split squat, which is just a split squat in the Zercher position. Now, this hits my quads a lot more because traditionally the Bulgarian split squat, at least for me, tends to really let up my butt as well as my hamstrings, but it kind of misses my quads. All right, so we're on to overhead pressing here where I'm hitting body weight every minute on the minute for 10 minutes, starting to incorporate some more leg drive into my presses because my strict press feels like it's kind of stalled out. And uh, in order to make all that better, I get a heavier lockout, I get heavier stabilization by pushing heavier weights above head, I get the negative, 
All of this in turn, using those heavier weights on the overhead will hopefully transition over to a heavier strict press, um, but that's what's sitting there. And then these chains, this is just, you guys see me doing a little bit of assistant stuff with these. Those chains are 90 pounds each, but I'm not lifting the whole 90 pounds. I'm trying to be explosive with it uh, through accommodating resistance because of it leaving the ground a little bit getting heavier as the press goes on. Also, working my abs like crazy. Again, uh, core is something that I kind of slacked on for a little bit because uh, I was honestly just being lazy. So what I'm working here, these are standing ab wheel rollouts. If you guys want to know how to scale this, I just did an entire video about them. That should be very helpful for many of you. But standing ab wheel rollouts are just about the toughest ab thing that is in my repertoire. There are a couple other ones that are up there with it, but for the most part, it doesn't get much tougher than this. So if I can extend the number of reps that I'm doing here, I truly believe that the deadlift is as much of a core exercise as it is a back exercise or a leg exercise because if your core folds, then you lose everything else on the lift. Now, the rest of this video is a lot of assistance stuff, me just showing a lot of every minute on the minute stuff, which is what a lot of the 45 Masters program uh, consists of. Uh, like things like these deadlift rows I'm doing for building up my deadlift. If you're not doing deadlift rows, you absolutely should be doing it. But I did want to take this end part of the video and do a question of the day for those of you who are still here. And that question is, uh, if you were to eliminate one of these four implements, the barbell, the dumbbell, the kettlebell, or the sandbag, what would you get rid of and why? I know it's an imperfect world, but you can't have one of them. Now, in the past, this would have been a pretty simple question for me to answer simply because I would have gotten rid of the kettlebells. It's not something that I use a ton of my training and I truly believed that anything that I was going to use the kettlebells for, I would be able to use the dumbbells also. Uh, however, now I've been watching a couple more channels that are a little bit more kettlebell based and that sort of stuff and I see some really interesting stuff and explosive stuff that I think would aid a lot in my training so I wanted to give it a try. Uh, so for me right now, it sounds like blasphemy, but I would have to get rid of the dumbbells. So yeah, there you guys go. Um, leave in the comment section down below if you are interested in participating in the question of the day. And I'm going to finish up this video here with a little bit of wood splitting. Now, I, all, there's always some haters in the comments saying, why aren't you splitting it on the outside edges? That's how you're supposed to split wood. Yes, I know. And that's how I split wood when I'm not putting it on a camera, right? But for these, some of these bigger red rounds, these are red oak rounds. Um, it's like a battle and I want to see how many swings it takes for me to break it in half. That's all I'm doing. This is actually on my neighbor's property and uh, I'm lucky enough to be able to process this firewood for him and really having the chance to just get in after some bigger rounds like that to see what you're able to do is always a great time and splitting wood is one of my favorite forms of general physical preparedness that you could possibly do. So um, yeah, as you guys can see, some of them are a little bit more dead so they go through a little bit easier but some of those early ones they were definitely uh, quite the challenge. So anyway, guys, that finishes up training for today. I thank you guys so much for all of the ways that you guys support the channel, the programs, the eBooks, the coaching calls. I just got off a coach call this morning and I'm absolutely on fire from it. I have so much fun doing those, just getting to know all of you and just literally making friends around the world. So absolutely love it. I thank you guys so much for all of that, all that you do, the likes, the subscribes, Welcome to all the new viewers who have been showing up. It's been so, so awesome to see the channel growing so quickly. Um, so I just thank you so much. I will catch you guys later in the week. Until I do, go out something amazing with Keep working on people. Be nice to each other. Come here, Kona. Yes, you, you're a good boy. You're a good boy. Oh, I love you so much. You're a good boy. You're a good boy. You're a good boy. Okay, we need to do a training video now. We need to do a, tra we need to do a training video. Training video. <laughs> okay, training video. Training. Training video. We have to do a training video now. Training video. We have to do the training video. We have to do the training video.